Welcome to the Christmas edition of Meet the Gimp. My name is Rolf Steinert and I'm recording this in Bremen, Northern Germany. I think for this edition I should do again a walkthrough through a photo. And this one I have selected. I shot it on my way to school in the morning. And you see here one of uh, our little side streets with cobblestones and uh, every suitable space and some insuitable spaces filled with cars. Uh, not very much lights on. All the stuff you see is uh, Christmas lights and uh, the street lights. And you see here the moon and Venus. The people are either already gone to work, off to work, or they get up a little bit later because uh, here is a, a part of the town where a lot of uh, intellectuals live and, uh, well, we teachers, we are among the first risers uh, in this area here. Okay, um, I want to have a little bit more atmosphere in this picture. Uh, it is a Nikon RAW file, NEF. And I have opened it uh, with UF RAW, with uh, the GIMP plugin UF, of UF RAW. And I want to have this part here a little bit warmer. And I want to have a really crisp and cold blue sky. To achieve this, I will make two uh, images out of this one RAW file, one for the sky and one for the lower part, for the houses in the street. The key for this is the white balance. And you see here, the camera has selected a white balance of uh, 5300, and this is for the sky to warm and for the lower part to cold. Let me start with lowering uh, the temperature, the color temperature, and now you see the sky gets more blue, more cold. This would be too much, way too much. But I think for me it's uh, better to go with all the sliders and so too far and then go back up and uh, look where it is not too far anymore. So this was way too far. And I think this is about right, about the stuff I want to have. Now let's look at exposure. And I think that is okay. You see here, the overall feel of the image has changed. All this cozy, warm uh, glow of the street is gone and uh, the sky is now cold. It was a freezing cold day and uh, well, I like the sky now. Exposure is okay. I don't need to change that and so I just pull this up here and look here at the histogram and I'll change this with uh, right mouse click here are in a combination histogram for looking now at the blue channel well yes you see here nothing overblown you see here overexposed zero and well, there's some underexposed stuff but this will work I select OK for saving this and now I have to wait for this for processing the file there is no real progress indicator now it's there and here is my image of the sky Again, I draw my RAW file onto GIMP and now I'll do just the same stuff 
just the same stuff for the lower part of the image. Let me pull this up here. Okay. First, um, let's look at the exposure. Um, there are some parts of the image overexposed. These street lights here, they are overexposed. Well, uh, I think there can't be <laughs> done very much about that. Uh, but now look at the color temperature. We are again at 5325 and I want to increase that. And this is better. You see the sky is now really ugly here. Before I close this, uh, let me just wiggle a bit with the curve here. Don't look at the sky. The sky is irrelevant here. Just uh, look at the houses. I want a little bit more contrast in there. And, well, i switch off this indication. Uh, well, it's below your viewpoint here. Um, here is a, a toggle for switching on the indicator for overexposed stuff. I'll switch that off. And now I have to pull this down again. So, uh, a little bit of S-curve gives a little bit more contrast in the image, a little bit more dark, darker dark zones and brighter bright zones. This is a bit too much. I like it this way. It gets a little bit more uh, 3D feeling, a little bit more plasticity with this. And again, I press OK. You can't see it now on the screen. The progress indicator isn't running uh, just now. That's a little flaw in UF RAW, but uh, it will be done really soon now. I now have two images, one for the uh, street here, and pull this away here, uh, one for the sky. I want to combine them, this at the bottom, this at the top, and so I just select this image here, go to the layers dialog and just pull this layer over onto the image of the street. And now I have here two images, one of uh, two layers of the same image in uh, one image here. Let me close this one here. I always forget to pull the stuff into <laughs> the video frame here. This software is new for me. Here is my image. This one, this layer is the sky. This here is uh, in bold because this layer has no alpha channel. This needs no alpha channel, but I can add one with uh, right click add alpha channel and you see now the uh, the font is also not bold here as in sky. The first thing I have to do is check if this image needs to be rotated. I'm notoriously lazy with uh, keeping my camera straight and uh, I'm off a degree or so and nearly all the time. So let's check that. Uh, zoom into the center of the image. Here it is. And now I drag a ruler over here and let's check here. This is not straight. This neither. So the image is tilting to the left and has to be rotated. I'll pick this line here between these two houses as a reference. Zoom in far even more, even more. And now I have first to lock both layers together here with this uh, chain symbol. And 
Now, if I'm rotating one, I'm rotating the other with it. Without these locks, I would rotate only the sky or only the street. So, locked, and I select the rotation tool. Check here, corrective, backward, that's right, cubic, okay. Clipping, adjust, I want a grid, and I want more grid lines. And now I just click into the image. Here it is, the grid, and now I just rotate the grid until this line runs in parallel to the border between the houses here. Uh, I should perhaps change the number of grids a bit, grid lines a bit here. Now as a line running over this border, well, this is okay. Minus 1.5 degree and I click on rotate. Now it's rotating the second layer. Rotating two layers needs double the time. Here it is. Checking. This is okay now. Shift Control E gives me back the whole image. Next step is cropping. I want to include, of course, the Moon and Venus. And I want to include a bit of this car here. I love the shine on the metal here. And uh, I'm not so sure about this roof here. And I'm uh, sure I want to have uh, this roof border in a corner, in the corner of the image. And I want to lose a bit of this foreground here. And further, I want to keep the aspect ratio of 3 by 2. So, select tool, fixed aspect ratio, here it is. Uh, I just keep that. And I think I start here. Just click into the image and pull down. You see the aspect ratio stays with me all the time. I had uh, selected here rule of thirds uh, markers and uh, I can go to golden section. Well, not. Uh, I go back to rule of thirds. So. Um, well, now I have included this roof here. I don't want to have that in there. And perhaps a little bit more sky. Going up a bit. Now I have uh, the vanishing point of uh, the street here on this point of interest. I think this is a good crop. A last check without any uh, rulers in there, no guides. I think this is okay. And don't, I just click into the image and get it cropped. Now I want to add a layer mask to the top image and uh, get the sky revealed and the street here hidden. For that, the layer mask on top should be white and this should be dark. The easiest way uh, to start is add a grayscale image of this as a layer mask. So right click here, add layer mask, grayscale copy of layer. I don't want to invert it, so deselect this here. This was still from the last image. Here is uh, the image now, and here the layer mask. Uh, I can't see the layer mask. I have first to right click here and say show layer mask. Now it's green here and you see here the image is black and white. I use the threshold tool to divide this image into a black and into a white part. This is the threshold tool. I just click here. Now you see the whole image is black. That was too much. 
I slide over to here and somewhere here sorry that was a wrong direction uh, now I'm getting a bit of white sky and uh, I look for a point where the sky is white and not too much of the other stuff in the street lightens up I think this is good here now I want to get uh, the rest of the sky white I select my lasso tool and select as much of the sky as I can here well that wasn't enough add and now I go to here select the white and pull it over. I can do the same stuff with uh, the black part of the image. Just select as much as I can in a quick way here. Go to the color swaps and pull black in. Now there is still some stuff to repair in the border of the two lines here. I deselect this, shift control A, zoom into 100% with pressing 1, you see black, and here we are. And well, I start with black, I just select the pen, get a fairly good pen size here and start to look here where I have to fill up with black. This is not so important with uh, the buildings. Much more important is it to uh, have no black left in the sky because you see a small spot in this uh, uniformous blue sky very well but uh, you won't see a mistake here in in the houses. There are too much fine structures there for, re uh, for seeing such errors. So the stuff here on the top left side, that has to go. And for that I just uh, select the foreground background color with X and paint over this stuff here. Gain X. Black is now foreground color. In the times of uh, film this was uh, really hard work. I did it then too with uh, a sticky red paint going over negatives. Um, well, much better now with the uh, Wacom tablet and uh, nothing sticky and stinky on the desk here. Now the mask is finished and let's have a look how the result is. I deselect show layer mask you see here the frame around the layer mask has turned white from green. The white shows that uh, when I'm painting now I'm painting on the layer mask and when I'm p painting now I'm painting on the image itself. So if I have to repair here something I want to paint on the layer mask. Let's have a look. Um, the overall impression is better than before. I have uh, still some, some things here. You see here uh, there is a reflection of the sky in, this, in these windows here. And here you can even look through uh, the house, through this window, into a second window, into the sky. And this color doesn't fit. Let's look at 100%. You see here it's considerable noise. There will be uh, 
edition about uh, noise reduction, but not now. Okay, I have to paint white over here. White is foreground color. And I select uh, the brush and not this harsh circle, but uh, this one. Go down with uh, the size a bit and uh, just start to paint here. You see, when I'm painting, the sky below becomes visible. Must be a nice room over there. So let's have a look at uh, the other windows with the reflections. On there. This doesn't look really good here. I have to check that. So let's first take care of this one here. This one here. And here on top. What has happened here? Let me check the mask. Just switching off this. Ah, it's in the image. Must be something in the paint of the house or so. Well, if I can see it later. I have to repair this. No, I have to repair this now. I select the clone tool, make sure that I'm painting on the house and not on the mask, and uh, I'm selecting this as my source with control and click, and now I'm painting here. Oh, well, I'm painting on the sky and I want to paint on the street here. Of course I have uh, to undo this here and select uh, this again as my starting point. I paint it from the layer of uh, the sky and that is obviously wrong. Oops, not a good idea. You see, every time I release uh, my pen or my mouse, uh, the pointer of uh, the origin returns. And so I have to paint always into the same direction to get this a sample of this area here. Well, that's better now. Perhaps here a bit. That's better now. Okay, back to the full image. I think it's nearly finished now. Um, I'll reduce uh, the size later, but uh, first I want to look at Venus. Let's go to again to 100% and look here that I catch Venus. Here it is. I don't believe this is really a phase of Venus. Uh, it's just a mistake in the image. I want to brighten up it a bit and uh, to get it a bit larger. So I select a pen and foreground color is selected and now I'm just painting this a bit brighter. Oh, first check. I'm, well, now I'm painting in the sky. This was way too much. Ah, well, I'm painting uh, not with 
a paintbrush but with a pen and now let's look here I set the opacity and the hardness to my pressure sensitivity and so I can just touch this a little a little bit and get it a bit brighter it should be not that obvious that I have cheated here um, but uh, it should be good it should be plainly visible uh, in the later image even in the reduced uh, size and so I simply enlarge it a bit and brighten it up a bit so shift control E it's more prominent now perhaps you can see it even with uh, the video compression now I have saved this image now as uh, an XCF file and uh, now I'm going to reduce the size I go to image and scale image I want to have a good uh, web size and this would be about 900 pixels high and 600 wide and I just press scale shift control E or even one and now let's check on the noise you see there is no visible trace of the noise now Venus is uh, still good to be seen the moon too and uh, there is no uh, border visible between uh, the sky the mask works good here and uh, this looks good this looks good here we have painted it looks good so this is nearly ready except for a little bit of sharpening and I'll do the sharpening with filters and hands and unsharp mask for sharpening the radius should be 1 or lower let's say here 1.5 and the amount adapted to that I think this looks quite nice and now I click OK wait for the sharpening to run and here we are you see now this is a little bit more prominent and the cars here are also a little bit more prominent this animation was sent to me by Rainer Hermann here from Germany he is a viewer of Meet the Gimp Meet the Gimp is viewed by so many people in so many different cultures I have got mails from all continents of the world except Antarctica and if you are looking at this uh, in Antarctica please send me a mail and there are so many cultures and I think a lot of uh, you will have some uh, fests uh, now around this change of the year and I wish you a happy time and a happy new year goodbye photocastnetwork.com your photography resource in the potosphere photocastnetwork.com